uh, we will talk today about uh, the um, and uh, the first slide um, today uh, is of HAI definitions of rate uh, risk factor associated pathogens uh, and uh, first of all we need to understand the uh, definition of healthy condition is localized or systemic condition resulting from adverse reaction to the patient. The patient is admitted, the organism is not incubated. It's not in the incubation period of the disease. Uh, however, this is difficult to determine. An infection is considered HAI if it happens or the date of event happens to be on the third day or third calendar day of admission, which means uh, the first two days we will not consider HAI from the third day and, and uh, on it will be HAI, so healthy care associated infection. The next definition that we need to understand also is device associated healthy care associated infection. So to, ha to have healthy care associated infection, the patient should be admitted to the hospital and the date of event start on the third day uh, of admission or after. To be a device associated HAI, you need to have the patient has the device. The device could be ventilator in, in VAB, could be urinary catheter in CAUTI, could be central line in CLEPSI. But this device has to be present more than two days. So the third day of insertion of the device would be considered device associated. And also, it can be considered device associated if the device is removed on the day of insertion, uh, uh, if the date of event is the date of removal of the device or the day after. So uh, we could have device associated while the device or the catheter, for example, is in place, but at least more than two days. And it can be without the, the, the device but only on the day of removal and the day after. So you have two days, including the day of removal, to consider the device associated in a patient without a device. What are the types of device associated uh, infection? They are CLEPSI, VAB, VAE, CAUTI, and these are all device associated, means you have device inserted in the body. And another group called procedure associated HAI, which is, which is presented only with SSI or surgical site infection. We will go through each one uh, quickly uh, to get an overview of this uh, uh, HAI. So the first one would be CLAPSI, central line associated BSI. Uh, so the uh, CLAPSI uh, definition is primary a bloodstream infection, which means lab confirmed. So we don't have any bloodstream infection, except if we have a, a blood culture or other way of detecting organism in the blood. So it's a lab confirmed bloodstream infection that is not secondary to an infection at another place. So this bl positive blood culture cannot be a reflection of urinary tract infection, an infection at another place or pneumonia, infection at another place, or tonsillitis, or whatever. So if you have infection at another place, the, uh, and the organism uh, in the uh, infection site, the primary infection site, and the blood is similar, we will not consider this primary, we'll consider it secondary. So we only report primary bloodstream infection that's not related to infection at another place. And of course, the central line has to be placed uh, at least two days uh, or uh, uh, at least two days, or has been removed uh, on the date of event or the date after. So the impact of CLEPSI, it increased the length of stay. It increased the cost of treatment to thousands of dollars to increase the mortality, attributable mortality, which is the mortality uh, um, in those who have CLEPSI compared to those without a CLEPSI. And uh, with reduced the rate of collapse in countries like United States, you will see that uh, a big number of collapse still happen in every hospital. Route for the, the how collapse happen. So organism enter the blood either extra luminally or intraluminally. 
The extraluminary means the skin organism uh, get access to the blood at the site of catheter insertion. Or intraluminary means the, the organism pass through the lumen of the catheter. So it, it mainly it is due to direct con contamination of the catheter uh, uh, and IV system due to due to manipulation, touching, uh, changing, uh, accessing the hub, uh, changing uh, uh, it, any any manipulation to the catheter from the outside can allow the organism go through the lumen of the catheter. Sometimes, and this is rare. It can be hematogenous or contamination of the infusate. Uh, hematogenous means the organism come from another location in the body with contamination from the infusate when the fluid itself is contaminated. And uh, and this uh, slide show you that this is uh, extraluminally and intraluminally through contamination of the uh, uh, catheter. And this is the. Uh, as you see here, uh, this is collapse prevalence. And yes, collapse is not the most common, but uh, again, it is uh, a very serious infection. When it happens, it, it, it causes bacteremia. As you know, symptoms of bacteremia could be fatal. Uh, and uh, uh, if you look at the incidence of uh, collapse in ICU, uh, this slide show you the incidence in Saudi Arabia and in other benchmark, including the NHSN, which is USA, INIC, which is developing countries, and GCC, which is Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, uh, Oman, Kuwait, as you know. So if you look at Saudi MOH hospital, you see that the collapse rate in, uh, in, uh, in ICU is around uh, 2.3 in adult, 2.4 in pediatric, and uh, in units, it's a little higher. Uh, central line utilization, uh, it means how much central line days we have. Uh, and as you see, so what are the risk factors for collapse? First is age. Uh, neonate, neonates, as we see, I show, I, saw, I show you a few seconds ago, higher rate in neonatal ICU. Immunocompromised patients. Patients with underlying chronic disease, like cardiovascular disease, gastrointestinal disease, cancer, uh, and uh, uh, male gender. But this is not very important. The healthcare risk factors, so these are the risk factors that is not personal, that we can uh, change through uh, good healthcare um, uh, uh, practices. Uh, so prolonged hospitalization, we have to shorten the hospitalization, shorten the central line days, use uh, uh, single lumen, not multi lumen, uh, central line uh, possible for contamination, parenteral nutrition, using femoral or internal jugular access site because they are associated with higher rate of infection, heavy microbial colonization, lack of maximal barrier during insertion, and any uh, non-clean uh, technique for insertion. Uh, central line insertion in an ICU or emergency department. All these are recognized risk factors for developing CLAPSI. We diagnose CLAPSI through uh, different criteria. The first one is recognized pathogen. Second and third one is commensal. Commensal means skin bacteria like coagulase negative staph. And in this case, you need two bottles of uh, our two cultures, uh, similar cultures, and some symptoms. But for the first criteria, only uh, organism like Pseudomonas or Klebsiella, you, do, you don't need symptoms and you need only one blood culture. So th this is slide show you the most important pathogen for uh, Klebsi uh, uh, in, in ward and ICU and other locations. So in, in ICU specifically, the most important as you look here is the coagulase negative staph. And this is a skin commensal. And the second one is candida albic, and the third one is a staph. So uh, the, the majority of uh, positive blood culture are uh, gram positive bacteria and sometimes uh, uh, candida. Uh, you will take in details the prevention uh, of collapse through the bundle. Just here to take a look, we need hand hygiene during insertion, maximal barrier, use chlorohexidine, and use a special 
uh, sites, especially subclavian, not internal jugular femoral. And the next slide is uh, about VAB. And the definition of VAB is a pneumonia that is identified using a combination of imaging, clinical, and lab criteria. And in a patient, so it's a pneumonia diagnosed re regularly by imaging, clinical picture, and lab measures, uh, finding uh, uh, positive blood uh, respiratory culture. And uh, in a patient who have ventilator for at least two days or the ventilator have been removed uh, on the day of infection or the day after. Uh, and this is a photo of ventilated patient. VAB is a very serious uh, disease that affects 10 to 20% of ventilated patient and is associated with very high mortality, sometimes more than 10% and even more in developing countries. And of course, as other healthcare associated infection, it prolongs the stay inside the hospital and consequently increase the cost of healthcare. Uh, VAB happen when the bacteria attack the uh, pulmonary parenchyma, and this happened especially uh, during uh, colonization from the aerodigestive tract uh, or uh, contaminated equipment like uh, ventilator or uh, other uh, mouth uh, 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 tubing. Uh, and uh, aspiration of secretion uh, to the lung, aspiration of uh, uh, secretion in the trachea, for example, into the lung. So if these secretions has the bacteria, you get infection. And you look at here, usually the infection happen in the lower part. And uh, uh, if, uh, if secretion go down or oropharynx is uh, colonized, highly colonized, and bacteria move to the lung, it can cause uh, pneumonia in a ventilated patient. Uh, again, pneumonia is not the most common, uh, but it is very serious. And in uh, Saudi Arabia, the green color, you will see that uh, pneumonia range between 1.3 in pediatric, 1.9 in neonatal, and 3.6 into uh, adults. And it is one of the high, uh, uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, it is one of the higher, uh, highest uh, uh, infection among the three common infection, Clepsi, Vab, uh, and Cauti. Uh, and uh, still we have higher rate, as you see, than NHS in the red color. Uh, if you look at the uh, utilization, uh, look at the green color utilization in Saudi Arabia. Utilization means how much uh, uh, ventilator is used among ICU patients. It is between 23 in neonates percent to 53 in adults. Of course, uh, ventilation is higher in adult population. What are the risk factors for getting VAB? The risk factor of getting VAB is extreme of age. So it is higher in all the age and units, malnutrition, immunocompromised patient. And under immunocompromised patient, you see uh, uh, several patients like cancer patient, transplant patient, uh, and so on. Underlying conditions and chronic disease, the more comorbidity, the higher risk of uh, VAB. And uh, uh, as you see, uh, the risk factor, uh, another group, we, yani we always uh, differentiate between risk factor that is personal, we cannot change, we cannot change the age of the patient, and risk factor that are uh, healthcare uh, uh, associated. And these we can work on, like conditions that increase the risk of aspiration. Aspiration means uh, something enter into the uh, lung uh, from the respiratory or gastrointestinal tract, including the subine position. So we, we need to raise the head of the patient. Gastrointestinal, gastroesophageal reflux, reflux get the gastric content into the lung, nasogastric tubing, uh, extubation, especially self-extubation, immobilization of the patient, coma and delirium, uh, and surgery. So all this condition increase the risk for uh, aspiration, uh, causing aspiration pneumonia. And another set of uh, uh, risk factor increase the risk of colonization from the oropharynx and the stomach, including the use of antibiotics. You know, when we use especially broad spectrum antibiotics, we increase colonization of oropharynx and the possibility of seeding the lung with this bacteria. Admission to the ICU, underlying chronic a lung condition and antacid therapy. The last group is intubation condition. When the intubation is prolonged, when the intubation is uh, emergent, 
uh, and frequent uh, ventilator circuit changes. These are in all uh, factors to increase the colonization of uh, uh, or contamination of uh, the uh, the tube and consequently VAP. So how we diagnose VAP? Uh, the regular way of diagnosing VAP is the combination between X-ray finding, clinical signs and symptoms, and microbiology uh, finding of uh, uh, positive culture. As you see, uh, schist X-ray it has to be present all the time. New or progressive or and and persistent infiltrate and other finding on X-ray. Symptoms uh, symptoms of uh, fever, hypo uh, hypothermia sometimes. In neonates, uh, cough, apnea, and tachycardia, tachypnea, sorry. Uh, and uh, you do, uh, microbiological finding is actually not necessarily present. Yeah, you can diagnose using the clinical finding and x ray only. Microbiological finding, if present, is pathognomonic uh, 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 to this. So we have uh, four types of pneumonia then. We have uh, pneumonia one, clinically defined. You don't have to have uh, culture. One pneumonia. With common bacterial pathogen, most of them, but pneumonia with viral Legionella and pathogen, very rare. And pneumonia in immunocompromised patients, sometimes it is caused by fungi, and this is very, very rare, no more than 1% of the cases. And remember that the first one clinically is around 60% of the pneumonia is diagnosed clinically. And we can uh, we can um, categorize pneumonia into two big types. Early uh, VAB and late VAB. Early VAB, it is the VAB that happened within the first four days of hospitalization. And usually the organism is sensitive uh, community acquired organism like uh, Haemophilus influenza, streptopneumonia, and this is usually easy to treat. But the late onset VAB, which start from the fifth day of hospitalization or after, this is usually caused by gram negative resistant bacteria like pseudomonas and acinetobacter and usually difficult to treat usually because it is resistant and hospital acquired uh, these are the organisms that are common for uh, causing uh, vab and as you see the first one is staph and again staph is very uh, is the most common maybe staph second common in 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 clepsy and the first one in VAB, uh, in ICU, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella. But VAB tend to be uh, gram-negative more than gram-positive. This uh, item is VAE. Uh, and uh, why we use VAE, not VAB? As you see, the VAB has some challenges in diagnosis. Why? Because VAB uh, more or less have subjective criteria especially when it comes to the radiologic finding like infiltrates, obesities, and this stuff. Also, some of the uh, symptoms that's common in VAB patients like fever, uh, abnormal white blood count, inverted oxygenation, uh, increased pulmonary secretion are, are uh, common in several other uh, conditions, not necessarily VAB. So it makes uh, diagnosis more difficult or more likely differential diagnosis rather uh, a, a concrete diagnosis and uh, make subjectivity very common, especially inter-observer variability in reading the X-ray. So they decided to do something uh, to include VAB. It's called VAE, Ventilator Associated con in, uh, Condition, uh, sorry, uh, events, and these uh, it, it, it's a combination of objective criteria, not subjective criteria. It is started by deterioration of respiratory Some hypoxic is hypoxic plus evidence of infection of the VAE, usually uh, seven to eight, uh, according to NHSN and medical surgical ICU, bare 1,000 ventilator days. And this is the rate for VAE in different uh, types of ICU. And as you see, most of them between five and 10. And uh, prevention of VAB uh, uh, through the bundle, you will take this in another lecture, so we'll not spend time on this. Uh, the next uh, slide is about CAUTI. And as you see, uh, CAUTI is uh, a UTI that is diagnosed in a patient who has urinary catheter, indueling urinary catheter that has been in place for more than two days, 
considering the day of insertion of catheter is day one, or the urinary catheter has been removed uh, on the date of event or the day after, uh, the, uh, or the day before, uh, uh, the day before, the date of event or the day before. Uh, and uh, the, the, the UTI could be symptomatic or asymptomatic. And this is uh, a slide showing the Foley's catheter. Uh, and uh, as you see, uh, it has to be uh, incubated inside the bladder. Uh, uh, and the impact of cauti, uh, it is more common than other infections, but less more severe. It causes, as other infection cause, prolonged stay five to six days and increasing cold. Uh, one, two things about uh, cauti. It increased the risk of secondary bloodstream infection, and it is responsible for almost uh, one third of inappropriate antimicrobial use in ICU. So it is very important for infection control. And uh, it can cause also a secondary infection or a spread the infection to other uh, sites of the GIT uh, tract, uh, sorry, the genetic urinary tract, including cystitis, uh, prostatitis, epididymitis, and uh, bioinephritis. Uh, how uh, infection happen? Infection happen due to endogenous or exogenous routes. So endogenous means uh, colonization from the perineum area, meatal or rectal or vaginal colonization, where in exogenous means the healthcare worker uh, or uh, the environment uh, are contaminated and uh, the organism go to the uh, catheter and then the bladder. Uh, as you see, previous studies, especially in the U.S., showed that UTI is very common. In, in Saudi Arabia, as you see, it, it is not as common as other infection. As you see, uh, it is uh, uh, 1.7 in adults, 0.7 in pediatric. The use of urinary bladder is more than ventilator and, urine and, and, and central line, and this is 70% uh, in adults and 21% uh, in pediatric. The risk factors, personal risk factor, similar to other risk factors, but it's only the risk factors similar to other risk factors include chronic conditions, especially diabetes, malnutrition, uh, immunocompromised, and comorbidity. In addition to this, pregnancy and female gender. So this is maybe the only uh, HAI that we interested in gender here. It's female because of the short urethra, but the healthy risk factors, including prolonged catheterization, insertion without adequate septic technique, insertion uh, outside the room, uh, and uh, insertion in OR increase the risk also. The microbial colonization of the drainage bag and other reason for appropriate catheter uh, indications. So if they use the catheter without need, this increase the duration of catheterization and the risk of infection. It could be symptomatic, and here we have symptoms like fever, suprapubic tenderness, costovertebral angle pain, or tenderness. Uh, and if the catheter is out, is is removed, you have urgency, frequency, and dysuria plus positive urine culture. It could be also, uh, and this is very rare, no more than two percent of the cases. It could be uh, asymptomatic bacteremic UTI. Here, no have no symptoms, especially except fever in old age, and you have positive urine culture and similar positive blood culture with the same organism. So in this case, it is asymptomatic bacteremic UTI. And here, uh, the gram-negative bacteria, especially E. coli, is the most common. As you see, it is the most common e, e. coli, Klebsiella pseudomonas. Uh, how to prevent you through the uh, bundle? And as you see, um, uh, use. Diminish the use of urinary catheter only when it is indicated there is certain indication to use. And if you use, use it with a septic technique, maintain it using uh, uh, recommended guidelines and shorten the duration of catheterization as much as you can. The last type of uh, HAI is surgical site infection. And surgical site infection is an infection that happened after the surgery in the surgical incision and usually is manifested by signs of infection, including redness, swelling, pain, fever, tenderness, uh, and sometimes bus collection, especially in deeper infection and abscess information, delayed healing. Usually we look for SSI 30 days or 90 days 
uh, after the surgery. Uh, we have three types of SSI, superficial, deep, and organ uh, SSI. The superficial, it happened in the skin, deep happened in the area under the skin, including the muscles and the tissue. Organ, it happened in the organs, like peritonitis, like abdominal infection, like osteomyelitis, uh, pericarditis, uh, uh, mediastinitis. All these are organ or space SSI. It's a deep SSI, usually manifested by abscess information. Uh, the impact of uh, SSI impact is increasing the length of stay and the cost as all other uh, HAI, but also it uh, decreases the quality of life of the patient by multiple outpatient uh, 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 visits, expenses, uh, and disability. Uh, the most important is increased mortality in surgical patients. So it have a mortality increase by two to eleven percent. And 3% of surgical patients actually die due to SSI, and SSI is the most common cause for death after surgical uh, procedures. And what, what happened is the incision get the organism either endogenous and exogenous. Uh, endogenous means that the skin uh, flora go through the skin incision and cause the infection. Exogenous when the uh, tools are um, uh, are contaminated. There is breaks of aseptic technique, no hand hygiene, uh, contaminated dressing, uh, contamination from outside uh, environment. And usually this happen as you see here in the second week. So the first week very few, five percent, but in the second week or the third week you have more than forty to fifty percent of the cases happening in the second and third week after the surgery. Uh, the rate is very high in developing countries. It's around 10%, 11%, uh, and 3% uh, only one third or one fourth of the rate in Western countries. The risk factors including personal risk factor as age, obesity, diabetes, uh, perioperative hyperglycemia. That's why we need to treat diabetes before surgery, malnutrition, infection at the remote site, Sometimes we treat tonsillitis before uh, we, uh, we do the surgery. Uh, colonization with the microorganism, especially on the, in the site of a, uh, incision. Comor uh, comorbidity, uh, systemic steroid use were smoking. Uh, on the, these are difficult to control personal, but healthy care, you can control. Like don't do hair shaving, do hair removal without shaving. Uh, the other thing is shorten the time of surgery. Uh, inadequate surgical technique. When you use inadequate surgical technique, you prolong the surgery and increase manipulation, increase the risk of infection. Hypothermia, prolonged operative view, uh, stay. Um, inappropriate use of antimicrobial prophylaxis. You're choosing the wrong antimicrobial or uh, the wrong dose. Uh, it it increases the risk of infection. The most important uh, organism is uh, staph, aureus, E. coli, and enterococcus fecalis. Uh, and the core preventive measure is using antimicrobial prophylaxis just before the incision. Uh, and you don't uh, uh, repeat this, uh, or if you repeat uh, to only one day, uh, inadequate treatment to promote infection. Uh, so you have to identify and treat this infection. You have to remove hair by clipper, not by shaving. Appropriate skin preparation with uh, uh, proper antiseptics, limiting OR traffic and limiting surgical duration. Uh, use appropriate surgical uh, techniques and uh, wound dressing. Uh, don't allow for uh, uh, hypothermia and don't allow for higher blood glucose levels. So you control for blood glucose level, especially in the first two days. Uh, by this, I finished my slides about the overview of healthcare associated infection. We talk about device associated infection and procedure associated infection. Device including CLEPSI, CAUTI, VAB, VAE, uh, and uh, procedure is SSI. Thank you very much.